Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Proper Baron and this is Crusader Kings 2. You know, a while ago I got a mail from Paradox Interactive and that mail asked me, have you heard of this game, Crusader Kings 2 and the Monarch's Journeys? And I said, heard of it, I live in it. So here we are, this is a video sponsored by Paradox Interactive and today we're going to do the Monarch's Journey of King Hetum, a very exciting Monarch's Journey, in my opinion one of the hardest, if not the hardest Monarch's Journey out there, but I think we can have a blast in this. I hope that you will have a blast in this because these Monarch's Journeys really serve a purpose. So, now as you will know, this game is free to play and as a game being free to play, of course, you don't really need to invest anything except your time and your skill and I'm sure that even if you don't know CK2 after this video you will roughly know what to do to survive and prosper as King Hetum. The way this works is that you just need to have a Paradox account, you log into the launcher, you do the challenges, those challenges come in multiple flavors. For example we need to grow, we need to keep the Mongols close to us because they are the biggest threat in the region and we simply need to survive. And you can't see it here but essentially there are bronze, silver and gold challenges stages of these challenges meaning that this is 25 bronze then 50 years would be silver and 75 would be gold. The more points you earn, the more you get here. You can see I'm still lacking six points. I have everything else though, and then I have the Joan of Arc, but I'll be honest with you again. The biggest thing that you should be worrying about is that you, when on the 1st of September you open up CK3, have the option for the cone-shaped Hennen. Do the Monarch's Journeys and you'll get there. So, now the good news about this Monarch's Journey challenge is that essentially you are in a position where you don't need to play an Iron Man. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm not feeling lucky today either. I'm not going to play in Iron Man mode, I'm going to play in Bronze Man mode, where you can, you know, save and then just reload if you make any mistake, meaning that you should never run into an issue where you just give up because you're too frustrated. Just, you know, take it easy, take it breezy and try to survive as King Hatum. Let's check him out and let's check out what we can do for him. Ah, uh, dear King Hatum, you know, he's a really rare case, even in the Monarch's Journeys, because he is not all about conquering the world, he is about survival. Look at him, 16 years old, he comes from the old Parthians under the Sassanid rule in the year 70. That's where this bloodline comes from. That's pretty amazing. And uh, he's a great character. I mean, he's patient, he's brave, he's ambitious, and he is cynical. But he only very recently became the king of Armenia. You can see our betrothed future soon-to-be wife used to be the queen of Armenia. And then our father said, you know what? Why don't we put a... Uh King Hatum on the throne instead. So here we are, and survival will be our biggest objective, because we are surrounded by the Crusader states. We are, of course, not actually Catholic. We are Maiaphysite, a different flavor of Christianity, a very niche flavor of Christianity. And those Crusader states aren't all that positive towards us. Then we have the Sultanate of Rome, of course, also quite hostile, even more hostile than the Crusader states. The Ayubids also would like to get rid of us. They would like to take control of this region here. But most importantly, my god, look at... Genghis Khan Temujin of the Mongol Empire. Now that's a man that you should fear. And look at these amazing stats, man. I don't want to be his enemy. And that is also why one of the challenges, of course, maybe you saw that earlier, is to make friends with Mongols. We're going to do that, but as of right now, you know, the Mongols are still somewhat far away. They're here in Persia, where, as we are, of course, here in Asia Minor, <laughs> Jihad for Persia. Caliph al Mustanzir. That is ballsy, but I have to tell you, I don't think you have any shot at defeating Genghis Khan Temujin with his 70,000 troops. I mean, good luck to you, but I'll see you in a week once you lost the war, okay? Oh, and would you look at that? Pope Gregorius IX is doing us a huge favor. He, he has declared a Catholic crusade for Egypt. You can see there are a lot of people coming down south trying to take Egypt. And with that, the Ayubids should be incredibly, incredibly busy. Now, what I'm interested in is the region here of Edessa. I can see that someone is... I think that's an internal war going on here. Actually, I can't quite tell. But what I can tell is that... We're going to try and swoop in here. You know, I made some money here. You can see things are going quite well. And I'm going to go, I think, and claim Edessa. But yeah, I, you know what? If we claim Edessa here, maybe we can just swoop in without any fight and make this happen. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to take up a loan and then hire some mercenaries because I need extra protection. Uh, what about the support of the Bulgarian company? Oh my god, no, you're way too expensive. Man, all of these are so expensive. We're going to go with the Turkic band. Welcome to the club. Let's do this. Let's get this done. Let's see whether we can actually pull this one out. Ah, well, uh, you know, I did tell you. <laughs> I did tell you this would happen. Galif al Mustanzia surprisingly lost against Genghis Khan. Who could have? Who could have thought? There wasn't a single fight. The Bektashi Order, the Holy Order of the Sunni Muslims, even took my capital, and I just ignored it because, well, we are in a campaign over here in Edessa. Not a single fight. But the crusade makes it so that my dear friend Sultan al Kamil Nasser al Din of the Ayyubid Sultanate says, you know what, I just want to surrender. And here we are. Armenia is not so little anymore. Well, I mean, we haven't gotten the challenge yet, of course, but we're doing quite alright. And look at that. Uh, a vassal of the Ayyubid Sultanate actually took Antioch from Antioch. 
there could be an opportunity for us to expand uh, later on down the line, but for the moment I think we're fine. I'm just going to hand out the land to new vessels that shall, you know, kind of cement our rule over here in the east, but I'm very happy. We swooped in, we destroyed them, and that is amazing. And you know, I can't help but notice that uh, <laughs> good old Sultan Kaikubad of Rum also has a bit of an issue here. Look at that. He is in that uh, crusade. He has lost a lot of his troops. You can see that he would normally have 5,000 just from his vassals, but he only gets 1.8k right now. So you know what? Why don't we just uh, do a repeat of what we just did? And I think it would suit me if I just became a very long snake. Let's take down the coast. Let's make sure that the coast of Asia Minor is under our complete control. Uh, and in this moment, I can only say thank you, France, for randomly walking into the army of the enemy. Now, it's a bit unfortunate because, as you can see right here, the Nicene Empire, uh, Empire has actually occupied Mulia, meaning that we would not gain it in any peace deal. Uh, at least not as of right now. But I think in the future, if this war ends, then I can immediately peace out and we should have a pretty decent time at that point. Lady the Maid of Teluch, my lord, there are strange tidings from the county of Teluch. As our country suffers under the strain of war, a young woman has come forward and declared that the Lord has spoken to her and instructed her to deliver us from the enemies of our land. She wears armor, wields a sword, and rides with the soldiers. We have our own John of Arc, and isn't that perfect in this monarch's journey where I'm trying to go for the last hairdo that is the John of Arc? I'm a huge fan. Welcome, Lady the Maid. I will support your endeavors. May you be one of my best commanders. Oh, and we don't just have John of Arc, we also have streaming arrows. Well, thank you. You know, if it works, it works, right? Right, so I'm not going to complain. Hmm. The nobles don't like Lely. They say she's a lowborn and she shouldn't serve me. You know what? She was sent by God. Are you crazy? I am the king and it's good to be the king. All right, so far so good. We protected Lely and now she comes to us here in the dark chamber. She speaks with passion, her simple honesty and forceful zeal both coming across as she looks you in the eyes. She declares a fierce loyalty and love for you as the chosen king. You're quite impressed by her passion, intelligence and sincerity. We are going to be the best of friends, my dear Lely. Uh, you are sent by the Lord. Oh my god, what happened to the Mongols? Kagan Kardan, son, uh, son of Kumohan, is now their leader. We had two deaths here, it appears. Urgada is already dead, and Khan Temujin is also dead, and now I'm thinking, do you have a relative that I can marry to one of my brothers? Look at that, we got some brothers here now in our court, and if we can marry them off, that could possibly mean that long term, we can be looking at, you know, making friends with some of the Mongols. So, you are going to marry that lady, and of course, that is the wrong religion, but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, and then the other brother of ours, this guy here, shall also be married. The entire country is boiling with rumors and gossip of Lely, the humble country girl who rose to become a trusted servant of the king. Hope of defeating the realm's enemies is blossoming, and peasants everywhere are celebrating this fantastic tale of a virgin savior from the humblest ranks of society. And would you look at that? Would you look at that? And while Lely is out here destroying a force much, much larger than what she has at her own disposal, the church says, oh no, she's not a really good person, she's just low birth and everything. Get out of here, church. You know what? Lely is a goddess and she was sent clearly by my family's ancestors. Oh. Would you look at that? Oh my god, this is just so damn beneficial for us. <laughs> so, the Crusaders won, and apparently Egypt was the only kingdom tier title held by the Ayubids, and now there is no Ayubid realm anymore. They completely splintered. Armenia will be victorious, as is the kingdom of Egypt. Okay, you know, we started out as this great king, but we were not exactly a zealot, and now we have become a zealot. The Maiaphysite faith and the Armenian church shall live forever. Let's get this done. I'm excited for Lely. Thank you. Honestly, this is such a great story. I really love that this happened in this monarch's journey. Chancellor Mamigon comes to see you, a look of worry on his face. He explains that there are increased grumblings among the nobles regarding the position of your protege, Lely. It seems many nobles feel that they have suffered her too long, and some still entertain the idea of demanding her arrest and trial for heresy. Hmm... You know what? The nobles are right. We cannot have a peasant, a lowborn, in our court. Quite the opposite, actually. I will knight her. Gladius Christi is your new family, my friend. Lely the Maid, may you serve me forever, because I sure will serve you forever. He offers me a white piece. I had this entire piece of land under control, but this war has now been going on for seven years. And granted, my battles haven't really been blessed uh, in any way. We lost so many of them, but I will not take a white piece. I will destroy our opponents once and for all. I will take them all down and I will take this land. So help me, Lely. So help me, Lely. I think we are going to win it right over here in Esparta. And the discount version of the real Sparta, we are going to teach them a lesson. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at how it is going. Oh, that's a difficult one, but I think we are going to win. And I got a barony here, don't, don't worry about that. 
I think we're going to win simply because of the center flank here, but it is still a very difficult one. Oh, look at that. We got him here. Okay, that was a big one. Man, Laylee actually carried us. And oh my god, it took me eight long years. Eight years! Most of the battles that we fought that were important, we actually lost. But now, thanks to the occupation and the ticking war score of plus 119% after eight years, I finally won the war. We are a long Armenia and, you know, I, I don't, I don't know, Kagan, Kadan, son of Komohan. I don't think they're gonna come over here. I think we're safe from uh, that influence, but we actually did it after all this time. We finally are victorious. I am so, so happy. And now what I'm going to do is... I have a beautiful, there he is, a beautiful uh, son-in-law, no, actually a brother-in-law, that's the right word there. And I'm going to give you Lukia, because that will make it so that he generates more Mongol characters that I can then make my friends, hopefully, you know, claiming this here. And I think, boom, there you go. After winning the war, finally, word is spread far and wide of your achievements. You completed the challenge, not so little Armenia. Very, very nice. Oh, god damn it! just when I thought we had peace. Ah, uh, and here we go. Years later, after the first turbulent years, it seems everyone in the country has gotten used to Lely Gladius Christi. Some appreciate her, some do not. But the more violent controversy and commotion has died out, and people are now preoccupied with other matters. She lives on, although the tales of the years of the early maid of Teluch are already the stuff of legend. Thank you so much, Lely. I, I really can only say we genuinely probably only won these coastal wars, and we are a long Ama Armenia. I think we only won them because of Lely. Hmm, and it appears that King Hatum has a bit of a suspicion that Queen Zabel is cheating on him. You know what? Let's hire someone to find out. Don't tell me you're cheating on me. Oh god! Wait a minute, is the first child even my child? Prince Taniel, why? Hmm... You know, this is high treason, Queen Zabel. How would he react here, I wonder? He's brave, he's patient, but he is zealous. And this betrayal is definitely not in the name of his faith, so you know what? This is high treason. Alright, and here goes number one. This war's over. Look at all the money we just made. I love it. And this is number two. 1.7k roughly. Sitting in our beautiful, beautiful bank. So many troops at our disposal. I am... I am so excited. I think what we're going to do here is, right, what the safest option is. I would love to take Antioch, because if you didn't know this, Antioch has a beautiful, beautiful trade post. And getting this trade post would mean that I would be practically all-powerful. So I think that is exactly what we're going to go for here. I'm going to declare war against Emir Agathon. What happened to my legendary leader? Did she die? And I'm known as the Purifier. What a good name, first of all, but... Oh my god, I, th I, th I think she's just gone. Wait, damn! Laylee is gone, and with Laylee gone, we need to make hard choices, because of course we lack this amazing commander now. But if I take Antioch, we have control of the entire coast right here, which is just gorgeous. End of a trade post, so I'm gonna take that over. There you go, word is spread far and wide of your achievements, you earn the rank of bronze in the we will not submit challenge. Very, very nice, I only need 50 more years. Man, time really flies, look at that, Armenia is holding it together, uh, Egypt is blobbing out of control, the Almohads actually quite impressive in their size, France seems to be in control of most of their region, and then the Mongol Empire, I don't know, they're falling over their own feet it seems, they have become Hindu. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I'll be honest with you, King Hetum is really a spider. We snuck Edessa away from our enemies. We took this duchy under so much pressure. Eight years of fighting. Eight years of strife and struggle. And now right here, we are at 100%, but only so very barely. You can see it here. We are, you know, I mean, we took him apart at the end of the day, but they called in the Sultanate of Rum, and I think I would have lost it. I do not think I would have won this one had they called them in any, any earlier. But now, we are a pretty, pretty sizable Armenia. I highly endorse this. And would you look at that, we're only one point away of the John of Arc. Um, I think that the Keep Your Friends Close achievement requires it that they can't be inside of my realm. So I think that the Mongols that we get the 60 plus opinion with are not allowed to be my vassals, for example. You can see I have a bunch of Mongols sitting right over here in the east now in particular. They are all Mongols and they are all very fond of me. But they are vassals of mine, so I don't think we're going to get that achievement right away. Uh, if nothing else, I can just release them at some point and hopefully make it that way. But for the moment, it does strike me as not really where we want to be. And you know, there are just some things... I, I think King Hetum the Purifier deep down knows that his son isn't his son. But he can't punish his son for the sins of 
you know, the son's mother. And of course, the mother was murdered then in court intrigue that I cannot explain, that King Hetum can't explain. I think Prince Taniel, whether he's related to us or not, he shall become the next king of Armenia and hopefully he will be a good king. I will not have any more children. I will remain celibate from here on out. And oh boy. Well, we were just hanging out now because the region around us is, of course, infighting a lot. Ever since the Ayubids fell apart, you know, this entire thing is a disaster for everyone involved except us. But look at that. Now the West can participate in being a disaster. Strangers from beyond the sea. The Aztecs are coming. And look at that, Taniel, whether you are my son or not, and let's be real, we all know that you are not my son. You are quite decent. He, he's quite alright. I mean, look at that. He's not the smartest, you know, probably can't even read, but he is okay. Can you also become just? Nope, did not become just. You know what? I'll take it. He's an okay character. There does not have to be a blood bond, as long as you are a good ruler, I think. And I have died out of nowhere. How did I die? Depression. You know what? That makes a lot of sense. Honestly, his life was like, he always knew that he had to carry on. He had a duty for his people. But he himself, I mean, he was burned, you know, by uh, his wife. Then the untimely demise of the maiden that secured his realm for him. And now King Taniel takes over. I guess, you know, in his, in himself, he knew that he had to serve his country, his people and his religion until King Taniel could take over. And now here we are. King Taniel has taken over. And King Taniel is honestly, again, quite excellent. Temperate, brave, diligent, sturdy. I like it. I really, really do. And you know what? I think he does not want to stand behind when it comes to the legacy of his father, whether it was his father, of course, is a different question, but we're going to focus on religion and then we're going to focus on destroying our enemies around us. I want to become exalted among men. I want to be known everywhere. And yeah, so I just checked it and this is exactly how we're going to do this. You can see I made this Baron independent and him being independent makes it so that he counts. He is now sitting at 60 plus opinion. So what I'm going to do is, and I think this is very, very convenient for us. You're Greek Orthodox? What happened with you? Okay, I don't know how that happened, but what I can tell you is I'm going to hand this stuff out to Mongols, the Baronies that is, and then I'm going to make them my friends and we can just, you know, stack it from there. You don't actually need to be friends with the Mongols in the Mongol Empire, of course, you just need any Mongol culture character that is independent or rather not part of your realm, I should say, and I think we can get that done in just, you know, these couple of provinces here, or maybe like a couple more, but we'll, we'll figure it out. It will be fine. And here you go. I just, you know, I gave some money to all the vassals of these individual counts and boom. You earn the rank of gold in the Keep Your Friends Closed Challenge. All of the people here like us, all of the people here love us, and that means they're all incredibly happy. I'll take it. That is lovely. That makes things so much easier. And so, as you can see, all I now need is to survive. And I think that shouldn't be that big of a challenge. Now that is beautiful. We have been playing for 50 years. We were independent the entire time. You see that King Taniel the Lion, he has not disappointed his father. He has turned out absolutely beautiful. I mean, just look at this valiant young man. I mean, 34 years old. You know what? He's not that young anymore, but he's not yet old. Only 25 years more. Maybe I can restore even more of Armenia in the time, but most certainly I am now secure. I am a power in this region and I am not to be trifled with. With God. And would you look at that, we are now King Hetum II, the wealthy of Armenia, 29 years old, a zealous man, a good man, although of course he does struggle with certain circumstances. His father, Blessed Taniel the Lion of Armenia, what a great man. Honestly, whether it is by blood or not, he is the direct descendant of, of course, his father, Blessed Hetum I, the Purifier. All of these are amazing. Let's walk together to the golden, the last golden medal for this challenge. And would you look at that? We will not submit. The gold rank has been earned. All of the challenges are completed. And as you can see, I have unlocked everything. The Joan of Arc. I also, of course, unlocked the medieval mullet, the cone-shaped hannon. All of these beautiful, beautiful CK3 cosmetics will be available for me as soon as the game releases on the 1st of September. I'm excited. I hope that you learned how to overcome, especially the early game challenge in this one. After that, you are pretty much good to go. But would you look at that? I have created the most prosperous and the most zealous family to ever rule over Armenia. We have such a cute, comfy kingdom. Now, if you enjoyed learning about this monarch's journey, and if you want to see how to overcome more challenges for the monarch's journey so that you will be able to have all of the cosmetics once CK3 releases on the 1st of September, go check out the playlist that is linked right here on this very screen. Have fun, and see you later, alligator.